In this video, we'll be going over relative solubilities. So to do this, we're gonna be mainly looking at KSP and the number of ions that the solid makes. So in general, it's important to remember that when KSP is super small, it means the solid is highly insoluble. Now, this is a topic we already covered, but it also means, this is what it also means. It also means it takes very little ions to make the to make it precipitate. So if we have a comparison, so if we compare like barium hydroxide, okay, and the KSP for this is five times 10 to the negative third times 10 to the negative third. That means that if you have um, our, our solid barium hydroxide here, okay, and if you have some barium, okay, let's let's pretend we don't have any solid. Let's say we have uh, some barium floating around, like barium nitrate was added. Okay, so like some barium nitrate came in here. Okay, and uh, we have a bunch of barium ions. So we want to make it precipitate by adding, let's say, sodium hydroxide. Okay, so how much sodium hydroxide do we need? Okay, if the KSP is pretty high relative to other KSPs in our appendix, this is pretty high, then what that means is it's going to take quite a few of these OHs. Okay, it's going to take, of course, this is quantifiable, um, and it's going to take quite a few to make it precipitate okay, into barium hydroxide, BaOH2 solid. Okay, now compare that to this. Okay, something with a really, really tiny KSP like copper sulfide. So copper sulfide, the KSP for this is 8.5 times 10 to the negative 45th power. So what that means is if you have a sample of copper in here, so let's say let's say uh, some copper nitrate. So all nitrates are soluble. So that's our source of copper ions. We have a whole bunch of copper ions. Okay, and let's say we have like a little salt shaker. Okay, and we sprinkled in some sulfide ions. Okay, it's gonna hardly take any like one, like right when this guy, like the second it hits the top of the water, boom, you're gonna get copper sulfide solid. You're gonna sink to the bottom. Okay, it's gonna form some copper sulfide solid at the bottom. Okay, the, like the instant this touches, it's gonna have this huge affinity for the copper and they will stick and they will sink to the bottom and form some solid. Okay, where it, so that's what it means when it has a really tiny KSP. So let's um, make sure we remember this um, for our next video when we actually start quantifying these numbers. Um, but that's what it means when you have a tiny KSP like that. Okay, so um, to tell relative solubilities, it's going to depend on KSP and the number of ions the solid can make. So Let's take a look at this example. Which is more soluble, lead carbonate with a KSP of 1.5 times 10 to the negative 15th or lead hydroxide with a KSP of 1.2 times 10 to the negative 15th? So here we see that our samples have a similar KSP, but one of them makes more ions than the other. So I am going to predict that this one is more soluble. Okay, and you can verify this by calculating the, um, the amount of X that shifts over to the right. So you'll see that what happens when you have more ions, you'll see what happens with the, um, with the exponent. So first I'll do PbCO3. So we have our, our lead and our carbonate here. Okay. and dash out the solid, zero, zero, x, 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 x. 
Okay, so um, the solubility then is going to be x squared equals the KSP, so 1.5 times 10 to the negative 15th. Okay, and I get x equal to, there's a reason I'm going to show this little step right here. So square root both sides or take both sides to the one half power. And you'll see that this is this number right here was as a result of the number of ions because I'm going to show you a shortcut in a second. So that's the number of ions. And then this number right here is from the KSP exponent. Okay, this is actually our total number of ions that the number right that was right here. Okay, so our answer for the solubility then for this is let's see what I have here. I have 3.9 times 10 3.9 times 10 to the negative 8th moles per liter. Okay, and now if I do this problem PBOH you'll see that it makes three ions instead of two. This will be plus two X. I'm gonna ignore um, any OHs from, from water. Plus two X here. So I'm gonna end up getting, uh, for my, my KSP, I get PB2 plus times OH minus squared. So I end up getting X times 2X squared, okay, or X times 4X squared, which equals 4X cubed. Okay, so to get the uh, right number for this, then I'm gonna, I'm gonna end up with X cubed equals the KSP 1.2 times 10 to the negative 15th over four, and then I'm gonna go take both sides to the one-third power, and I'll take this side to the one-third power, and again, we see that this number right here is the total number of ions, okay, and then this 15 right here is from the KSP. Okay, so I'm gonna summarize this with a little shortcut so you don't have to do full-on ice tables to figure this out. Okay, so, so anyway, my x right here equals 6.7 times 10 to the negative six moles per liter. Okay, so what we predicted was the one that made more ions is going to be more soluble. And as you see, it's because of this, it's because of, as you, as you can see, it's because of this part right here, this step right here. So on over here, we took both, both sides to the one half power because there were two ions. Over here, we took it to the one third power because there were three ions. Okay, so our exponent ends up being um, roughly 15 divided by three. We got negative six, but roughly is a rough estimate. Okay, and over here, our, our estimation was 15 divided by two, or, you know, seven and a half or eight around there. Okay, so 15 divided by three is about five. Okay, and that's a good approximation if we're just trying to figure out which one is more soluble. Okay, so if it makes more ions, you're gonna get a, a bigger number right here um, when you, uh, when you, um, oh, sorry, when you solve for X at the end, okay? So to summarize that, um, since, the, since the number of ions equals the total exponent, you could use the following. You could use this. You can use um, this as an estimate, estimate. You could use KSP exponent, whatever the exponent is in the KSP, and divide that by the total number, the number of total ions, okay, and that gives you a good estimate of the, of the solubility, okay. So now for the practice, for the your turn practice, Okay, I have a couple questions here. So these first two are just like what I just did. Um, you should be able to use the shortcut on both. There are times where the shortcut's not gonna work and you would actually have to calculate it, uh, calculate the amount of X, okay, the amount of shift that goes over to the right. 
Um, it looks to me like you could use the estimate on both of these, on one and two. And then in number three, it's asking you, in number three here, it's asking you if you had a test tube with barium ions, calcium ions, and silver ions, and you slowly added sodium sulfate, so um, you're basically, essentially you're adding sulfate ions, what would be the order of precipitated products? So if, um, if you need help with this, I would rewatch the very beginning when I was drawing those two beakers and, and describing um, what KSP means. Okay, and you're going to need, you're also going to need your appendix, okay, to solve this, because I didn't list the KSPs of the things that you need. So you're going to need um, that appendix D um, and then find uh, the KSP of the different precipitates that would form from these. Okay, so let's see what you come up with on that.